Today's encouraging word comes out of the book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 24 through 30, dealing with a servant's heart, a servant's heart. Verse 24, and there was also strife among them, the apostles, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, this is Jesus, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is not that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. Yea, are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, so here we are, the apostles uh, arguing about greatness at the dinner table with Jesus. Can you imagine that? Uh, I got news for you guys. Jesus is the greatest. Uh, he's God. So just give up now. But they wanted to have this discussion about greatness. And is it greater uh, to sit at the table uh, and, and uh, ha- uh, for he that sits at the table at meat or he that serveth? Okay, so uh, to be served or to serve, what's greater? You know, are, you, are you great because you're being served because you're so high and mighty? Or are you great because you're serving and, and you're living uh, humble life. Here, clearly, Jesus points out a couple things. First, in uh, 27, for whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. Okay, so Jesus associates himself with service, right? So if you, if we're as Christians called to be Christ-like, and Jesus associates himself as a servant, then we should be like Jesus and be a servant. But then what does that get you? Yea, are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me. So here God has given Jesus a kingdom and Jesus is giving it to the apostles that ye may eat and drink at my table at uh, in my kingdom, and, and listen to this, here it is, and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So in order to have power, in order to have uh, rule over kingdoms, in order to have judgment over the 12 tribes of Israel, we are to be servants. We are to have a servant's mentality. You hear people say, have a servant's heart, be, be like a servant, you know, serve others. What does that mean? It shows clearly here what it means. And, and there's two parts. One is having a humble nature about you to humble yourself before God and to be a servant, not to think yourself uh, unworthy of tasks, right? Because if you have pride, right? You may find yourself unworthy. If you're the CEO of some big company, uh, you may think that you're above certain things. You may think, you know, if you're driving a big Mercedes Benz or BMW and you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company and, and, uh, you know, there's probably some of those, these individuals right here in, in our area in Charlotte. And, uh, you think that, uh, you know, you don't have to clean the toilet in the bathroom or you don't have to get your, you know, go crawl under your car and change the oil or whatever it is. You, you know, you have people that can do that for you. You know, when you do that, when you kind of elevate yourself, what you're doing is you're putting yourself above, above others and you're kind of putting your needs above others. And, and the Lord shows here that we should have soft hearts for others and that we should be above nothing and that we should be the ones serving. And when we're humble and we're serving, the Lord can use us to reach others. Uh, think about it. If you have somebody that uh, has power or prestige or so forth, you know, th- there may be all kinds of reasons why you listen to them or why you'd be around them. You know, you may have an agenda. You may want something from them. You may be impressed by their look or their possessions but if there's someone you know that really doesn't have much to their name, that ha- doesn't really have a reputation, that really doesn't look like anything special, and they're helping you and, and they're telling you about the Lord, you know what? If you're going to listen to them, you're going to listen to them out of a pure heart. And I believe that that's God's servant for you. It's someone that God can use. And when God can use you, you see here in verses uh, 27 through 30 that you 
you're appointed under a kingdom. You're given rule over others. You're at the, you're at the table with God. You, you see here in verse 30, Jesus says that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That sounds pretty good to me. And that means that I want to serve the Lord so I can be right with God. And you should too. You should want to serve the Lord to be right with God. And what does it mean to serve the Lord? What does it mean to be a servant or to have a servant's heart? It means number one, to have a relationship with God. Friend, do you have a relationship with God? Are you praying to God every day? Are you fellowshipping with God? Are you spending time in God's word? If not, that's the starting point. Uh, cause again, he can't use you if he doesn't know, you know, if you don't know him. Of course, he knows you. The Bible says he knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows you, but he can't use you if, if you don't know him. So the first starting point is getting to know the Lord. And then, uh, the next starting point is taking that bold step of faith and, and, and doing a work for him. Whatever, uh, talents the Lord has given you, starting to use those not for your own gain, but for the Lord's. And a lot of times these things work. Uh, in opposite directions. So um, if you're given a skill, let's say you can build a house better than anybody and you have a uh, Saturday and on that Saturday, uh, you have 10 hours of daylight. And in those 10 hours, you can either go build a home for profit and make a good good bit of money for yourself, or you can go ho- build a home for someone that needs one that has no money to pay you. God's saying, go build that home for someone that has no money to pay you. And tell them about Jesus. Tell them that Jesus called you to do that. Tell them that Jesus changed who you were and changed your heart and your desires and that you want to do things for him. That's what God's calling us to do. But so many people are saying, no, I'm going to go build the money. I'm going to go build the house for the money. And I'm going to use this money for dot, 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 dot. And that goes back to the idea of greatness. Greatness in God's eyes is so different than greatness in the world. In the world, it's all about me, me, me. It's all about status and possession and look and so forth. And in God's eyes, it's all about service and others and having a heart for the Lord and being willing to make it part of every day serving God and living for God and not just making it part of your day as a habit or routine, but but as who you are, as your person, so that people look at you and they say, that person loves Jesus. And I know they love Jesus because look at what they're doing. And that friend is encouraging. So I I encourage you to continue to serve the Lord if you're already doing it. And if not, to step out and uh, take a step of faith and and do more for God and, and get more in his word and see what he's calling you to do and look at your talents and search yourself to see how you can serve the Lord, not just on Sunday afternoon or something or once a month or at Christmas, but at inconvenient times. At times when it's not exactly easy to do, God's calling us to do it. He's saying, that's greatness. And if if you want to be called great by God, then that's what he's calling us to do. So I hope this is an encouragement. It was to me. I hope it is to you. Uh, Take care.